What's up guys, Iovo here, and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a tutorial on how I make my tutorial videos, which sounds kind of weird, but I'm going to be walking you through the entire process of how I make my videos from start to finish, all the way from planning my videos to recording them and then editing them and showing you what makes, in my opinion, a tutorial video really effective. And so with that being said, let's get started. <laughs> Now the example I'm going to be walking you through is the video I made on how to record your screen in 2020. And you can probably tell already that I'm not using Premiere Pro. I use Premiere Pro for all of my videos except for my tutorial videos, and I'm going to be touching on that later. But the first thing I do when coming up with a tutorial video is thinking of an actual idea. And what I usually do is I look for tutorials that need to be updated or haven't been made in a very long time. So for example, when I was looking at how to record your computer screen, as you can see, when you look at when you look up how to record your computer screen, a lot of the videos were made a while ago. And if you look up for the 2020 term, what you can see is that there was very few videos actually made in 2020. And the ones that were made only have one to 2000 views. And so this is a video that I can make and rank very high in. And if I look this up in the keyword explorer for TubeBuddy, which I will link down below, it also says that it's an excellent fit for my channel. It does all of the analysis and it shows me that, you know, the average video on the first page has 5,000 views and my average video gets 6,000 views. So it's a video that I can make and easily rank in and it hasn't been updated in a while. So it's the video that I'm going to be going forward with. Now, once you think of a video idea, the next step is to plan your video out. And for tutorial videos, this is in my opinion, the most important step. It's very important to plan out your tutorial videos because you wanna make sure that the people that are watching these tutorials can follow each in every step so you're being as clear as possible while showing them all the necessary steps and no matter who your viewer is they'll be able to watch this video and accomplish the task without having any questions at the end and the way i ensure this is by making a list of all of the different things i want to cover in my video so for this video on how to record your screen i make a list of all the different concepts i want to go over from downloading the software which is streamlabs to teaching them how to actually start and stop the recordings change their inputs change the resolution and all of the other steps. Now, once you make a list of all of the steps that you wanna cover in your tutorial, it's also very important to take note of different concepts that you may have to explain because your viewers may not be familiar with the terminology of certain concepts that you're going to be covering in your video. So for example, when I made my video on how to record my screen, one really important concept is the idea of creating scenes and then sources where you can actually set up your screen recordings. But in most tutorial videos, what people might do is just say, hey, you wanna set up your scene and then you wanna add a source to your scene. Except you're assuming that your viewer actually knows what a scene and a source is. And this is usually not the case. So you wanna make sure you make your video with the mindset that your viewer doesn't know about concepts that are tied to this uh, tutorial that you're making. And you wanna make note of this so that in your actual video, you can explain these concepts. So for example, in this screen recording tutorial, I make it very clear that I should explain to my viewer what a scene and a source is, and I explain to my viewer what a file path is because there is a chance that they might not know what it is, and you wanna be as clear and concise as possible. Now, this is more specific to software tutorials, but you also don't wanna assume that your user is using a certain type of machine. They could be using both a PC or a Mac. So when you're doing something such as covering shortcuts, for example, you don't wanna just give the window shortcut because your viewer could be a Mac user and you don't know this. You wanna make sure that you debunk that assumption as well. So when you go over any shortcuts, make sure to cover both the Windows and the Mac shortcuts. And when I make my Photoshop tutorials, for example, I make sure to do this as well, just so that the viewer isn't confused if they're using Using a different machine. Now the next step is to actually record your video and before I record my videos I actually like to do a try run through. So what I'll do is I'll actually run through the entire tutorial and go through my list of different talking points once without actually recording the video just to see if everything is very smooth to make sure I'm not missing anything and to ensure that it's very cohesive. But once I go through the dry run I will record the tutorial video. Usually I'll do it in one take but you can do it in multiple takes as well depending on what you're most comfortable with. Now there are a lot of different screen recorders you can use and a lot of them are free such as Streamlabs OBS and you can also use free video editors as well to make your tutorial videos. I have a video on that that I'll link down below but I actually like to do all of my work within Camtasia because in my opinion Camtasia is the best program to make tutorial videos and it saves me hours compared to using a program such as Premiere Pro. 
Now don't get me wrong, when I make my normal videos, I use Premiere Pro to edit everything, but when I make my tutorial videos, I like to use Camtasia because it'll save me three to four hours just because it has all of the functionality I need and it's a lot faster to actually apply the effects that I need to within Camtasia. So what I'll do is I'll open up the Camtasia screen recorder by pressing the record button and then it'll open up the recording uh, interface and I can select the audio input, the screen that I want to record, as well as add my face cam and it'll record everything at once and also sync it up. And that's basically how I record my videos. But like I said, you can use any screen recorder to record your tutorial videos. Once I finish recording my tutorial, you can see that it creates a raw recording file. And then what I do is I add it to my timeline in Camtasia. And the next step is to just edit your video. Now, the first edits you wanna make, of course, is cutting out any silences or any parts that you don't want in your video. So that's the first thing I'll do. I'll make sure that my video is concise and it has all of the talking points that I wanna cover. But afterwards, what you also wanna do with tutorial videos is ensure that your video is very easy to follow. And you do this in three ways. So if you're making a video that has a very complex interface, what you want to do is you want to zoom in on certain parts just to make sure that the viewer can see everything. And this is really easy to do within Camtasia. So what I usually do is I just click on the video that I want to zoom into and I'll just <laughs> literally zoom in and it accomplishes the task. And if I wanna apply the exact same zoom to any other video clips, what I can do is I can right click, click on copy properties, and then right click and paste the properties. So as you can see, Camtasia makes it very easy to zoom. And another way you can also zoom is by using the animations. So in Premiere Pro, you might have to add keyframes to actually zoom, but in Camtasia, it's really easy. All you have to do is go to the zoom and pan uh, feature, click on the clip, and then all I have to do is zoom in to where I want to zoom in. And as you can see, it actually creates this animation. And if I make it span the entire video and I play it back, it'll actually do the entire zoom for me, like so. And by the end, it'll zoom in to where I want it to. And so for me, it's very easy to do this within Camtasia, but you can do this with any other program. It's just very important to zoom in where a user might have trouble seeing your screen. Now, apart from zooming in, another thing that's really effective in my opinion is to have a cursor highlight. So as you can see, the cursor is actually yellow in this video, and it just makes it very easy to follow the cursor around if you're doing a software tutorial. And I've found this the easiest to accomplish with Camtasia as well, because all I have to do is go to cursor effects, go to cursor highlights, and then literally just drag and drop it to the video clip I wanna apply the effect to like so, and this one already has a cursor highlight, but it literally takes two seconds. So I prefer using Camtasia to do this as well. And then finally, another way to make it very easy for your user to follow you is to just add text. So if you're talking about using keyboard shortcuts or typing out certain things, it does help to have text on the screen because it'll make it very easy to follow if it's a complex tutorial. So those are, those are the three ways that I like to make it easier to follow along. But once I'm done recording my tutorial and adding in zooms, text, and cursor highlights, that's pretty much the end of the editing process. The next step is to just upload it onto YouTube. But that's how I make my tutorial videos. Let me know if you guys found this video helpful down below in the comments. But that's about it. If you guys did like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. And as always, thanks for watching. My name is Iovo, and I'm signing out.